Hello and welcome to episode two, where we were trying to take the top off this keyboard, um, but it seems like I'm really forcing it and I don't really want to do that anymore. So I am going to uh, take this side off, um, regardless of what I said about um, possibly um, about this side actually supporting some parts. Uh, I'm just going to take it off anyway because I really want to look underneath here and see what exactly is holding this thing down. So uh, let's take a look. So I'm going to take this screw off first with a better screwdriver. Um, it seems the one most likely to uh, be supporting a part. So I'm just going to remove it and see what happens. <laughs> Nothing, apparently. Um, okay, so we've got a washer that goes on it. Um, the washer is, looks like it's about half an inch across. And we've got a screw that is... Hmm, what is it? It's a 632 screw. That's coarse, coarse threads. That's pretty interesting. Oh, and it's, uh, it's a little over a quarter of an inch. So that goes in the bag. Uh, let's also remove these guys. So we've got also a quarter of an inch and the size is 632. I have a feeling these are all going to be the same size. So, hmm. Okay, that was definitely a support for a part. Let's take this, uh, let's take these bottom ones out. There appears to be something in there, some sort of a gunky substance. Same size on all of these. So there's this uh, little dot next to it. I think that's just a, uh, a pin um, that uh, aligns the side. Hmm. And these. I don't like the look of these. They look kind of like rivets, but I guess we'll uh, we'll find out when we try to take it out. Okay, three more screws. Hmm. Let's see if I can get a bigger screw in there, bigger screw bit. No. The problem is that these screws are large, 
but the notch is, the slot is also thin. Just kind of a weird combination. Okay, last one. Let me get this closer to the edge. Unfortunately, you can't see that, but that's okay. It's just unscrewing a screw. So, all right. Now, the question is, will it cooperate with us and come off? <laughs> no. So, there doesn't appear to be anything holding this on. It just may be, you know, that the paint has uh, dried on it. So I'm just going to try to pry it out a little bit. Yeah, it's just like, you know, congealed grease and, you know, age, I guess, I think. Okay, so I'm gently moving this, and it, it appears as though this rivet is not actually riveting the actual side, so that's good. Uh, I'm going to try to pry in here. There we go. Okay, so... All right, so that's coming off. So that part's loose. Huh. It appears as though this back part is moving. Why is the back why is the back part moving? It shouldn't. It shouldn't really be attached to anything. Up the bell. So it appears to be maybe, let's see, it's something over here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they got this on. So let's look at it from the other side. Um, let me take the, let me take this handle off, because now it's getting in the way, so, oops. Pry it off, put the screw back in, so that I don't have to measure it really. Put the handle in bag three, okay, so, uh, yeah. Too hot. Ah, there we go. Yeah, it was it was just stuck. Huh, okay. So let's just pry. Let me get this back on its bottom. Okay. Now I can just sort of pull on it. There we go. Oh, there's a screw, uh, there's a, uh, a spring right over here. So I can just uh, remove that. There we go. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, these are um, bearings, or bushings, actually. Um, so that held these in place. Kind of a poor design, if you ask me. That the case is actually... Uh... Pardon? 
part of the support mechanism. But um, I guess that's the early design. Uh, okay, so we're going to set that aside. Um, and then uh, I wanted to look at this underneath to see if I could find out why this thing... Yeah. Hmm. Oh, okay. So there is actually a screw here. And it looks like I may have bent that part. I can probably bend it back easily. But it seems to go like there's another part in here that it fits into. Anyway, you put your screwdriver in this hole. <laughs> okay. Uh, you put a screwdriver in the hole and you unscrew that. Um, and that was probably what was holding this in. I think. So let me go get a screwdriver that fits and we'll try to unscrew that. Okay, it took some doing, um, but I found a screwdriver that was long enough, small enough, and thin enough to fit in here. So that's kind of a weird design. Uh, okay, so there's the piece. Um, so this is a funny looking screw thing. It fits on here. And the end of the screw is, let's see, what is it? Is it four something? No. Is it five something? Looks like looks like 540 to me. So, bag three. Now is that what was holding the, uh, the top up? No, there's probably some other stuff in here that I don't know about. Um, so, I'm wondering. If, uh, well, okay. Let's, uh, let's see. Anything else that I can see that's holding this thing down? No, not really. I don't really see anything holding it down. All right, let's take off the other side plate. So, uh, this looks to have two different types of screws. So we've got four over here and two different ones over here. Let's remove the, uh, the bottom ones first. Here I've got this long screwdriver that will certainly help. Okay, um, this is a little over a quarter of an inch and it is um, 632, so that's the same kind of screw as was used on the other side. Doesn't look like the heads are any different either. So we'll just remove these screws really quickly. Do, 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 do. Removing, removing. And I got those three screws also. Oh, and it just comes right out. Interesting. Okay, so there's a gear attached to this. And it does, it just comes out just like that. That's kind of weird. That's a weird way of doing stuff. 
Yeah. These gears are not actually screwed into anything. They just sort of sit on the plate in these bearings. Hmm. Fascinating. All right. Okay. They're very greasy. So, oh, and right over here is the serial number, 13308. That's uh, much clearer. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'll close off bag three, start bag four, so that I can put these gears in there. So this is bag four, F13308. So I will put this greasy gear, this greasy gear in here. So that's going to be fun, taking apart and modeling that. Okay, and then there's also this gear. And if we look at it, huh. if we look at it from the side, there is a, a letter B and a 259 stamp on it. That's interesting. There's a long flat spot here that corresponds to a very small flat spot here. And it just comes right out, just like that. So that can go into bag four also. It too is very greasy. Okay. Also, we have this, um, which is actually a friction brake. Um, it sort of hooks on to here and basically serves to slow this down. That's really that. That's really the purpose of that thing. Um, oops. Okay. We've got another part that just comes right off. Uh, just comes right off. So. Just like that. So I'll go in bag four as well. Any other parts that want to come right off? No? You sure? All right. Uh, okay, so that was that. That's all the grease. So I think that's bag four. So that's going to go, so that's going to go to the cleaners to clean all that stuff up. All right, so, um, again, I don't really know why the, uh, why the top is not coming off. So, it's kind of weird. In a very weird sort of way. So let's take a look at what else we can do. All right, um, this back piece, can come right off because um, it appears to be screwed onto this secondary side plate. So let's just take that off, get it out of the way. So I'm going to start bag five for that. Bag five, F13308. So here's a screw. It's uh, It's got kind of a chunky head. And its size is uh, 632. Wow, I'm hitting all the coarse screws. That's interesting because the Model uh, K that we took apart had all fine threaded screws. 
These are all coarse, uh, fine threaded. Yeah, these are all coarse threaded screws um, that we've encountered so far. So that's kind of interesting. So now I'm trying to remove this other screw. It looks like it has a thinner slot. There we go. So it always helps to have a whole bunch of different screwdrivers. Uh, same screw. Oh, and the length is um, just a little over a quarter of an inch. So there's bag five. And now I think, yeah, that there are pins here for alignment. So I should just be able to um, pry this off uh, from where? Somewhere. Just pry it right off. Okay, uh, all right. So prying it off is gonna be a little difficult because there's no place to really pry. So I'm just gonna take one of these uh, pin punches and just give it a little tap to sort of remind it where it needs to go. No? Hmm. Interesting. It's certainly not being held on by anything else. So, yeah, I'm just gonna move this back and forth, and up and down. I'm not really bending anything. There we go, now it's off. Okay, so, all right, so this looks like it's um, one big piece of, I don't think it's iron because look at that surface over here. Let's see if I can clean it up a little bit. Well, not really, but it's, it doesn't look like it's iron. It has this yellowish tint, which makes me want to say bronze. I wonder if this is bronze, but in any case, it's certainly a cast piece. It's all cast of one piece, uh, with the exception of the pins. There's one pin on this end and two little pins on this end. Um, and the rest is basically machined flat where it needs to be, um, and then drilled and tapped. So, and then there are these, uh, these, places where, where there would be a, a, an axle, I guess. Yeah, that's where the, um, that's where the carriage axle goes through. Um, and I guess that would have been drilled and maybe reamed. It's a bit shiny in there. So anyway, so that would be kind of fun to model. Uh, any markings on it? No, it doesn't look like it. All right, so that's kind of a fun fun little piece. So we'll have some fun with SolidWorks on that. So that was bag five. So I'm wondering if I should just take that and put the screws back in. Um, I think, I think on the whole, uh, I'll leave them out. I mean, I have, uh, I have this video record, so. All right, what else have we got? Well, there's obviously, there's obviously this whole mechanism that doesn't appear to be attached to anything yet. It looks like it's just loose in there. Well, maybe not so much loose. 
See how it really does seem kind of loose. But um, there's this piece that moves up and down. Uh, so, see there's some other things over here that turn. Um, let's see. All right, so let's take a look at the other side. really wish. All right. So, yeah. Okay. So we've got um, this shaft over here, which appears to be held in place. Uh, it looks like just this single screw over here. So let's take that off. Let's go ahead and take that right off. Let's see what happens. All right. So we've got um, a screw and a washer. So the washer is about a half an inch across. And the screw appears to be the same as what we just pulled off. So no difference there. Let's see if I can now gently, yeah, this just comes right out. Sort of. Almost. Almost. There. Okay. So there's the end. That goes into that kind of um, semicircular hole. All right. So there's that mechanism, which we can now set aside. All right, um, we've still got this to go. And it would be kind of nice to know how to remove it. And it looks to me like, it looks to me like on this side, it's actually taper pinned in. That's a funny little mechanism. Oh, so this is actually kind of like a helix. It's um, a really funny mechanism. Never seen anything like that before. All right. Um, there's this end piece here. Okay. So what I think I'm going to try to do is yeah okay so i think i'm going to try to take this gear off which is uh, taper pinned into the axle um that could be a scary proposition but We'll see. So I'm going to uh, alternately heat it and freeze it. And then I'm going to use uh, one of these pins, one of these pin punches. Looks like this one is, uh, is the right size. This is a 1 16th inch. That's the small end right there. You can tell that right away. Um, and see if we can actually remove that. So I'm going to stop the video for now and we'll see. And as you can see, I was actually able to take off the top plate. It just required a lot of persuasion, um, mainly because these key tops are really rusty. So the rust sort of kind of held on to this. If you look at the back, there really isn't anything there that is attached to the bottom. Um, we've got some sort of a thingling around here, which uh, which is basically this thing right here. Um, we've got this rotating thing here from the other knob. OK. 
Okay, these things move back and forth. Got this thing. So, but anyway, there's, there's nothing that actually holds it on. Um, there are some pins on the front and back that are kind of tight. But anyway, there you go. So, um, I was trying to take this, uh, this gear off, um, and I was not very successful. Um, I did several rounds of uh, heating and cooling, and I punched it with what I believe is the correct size of punch, and I just wasn't able to, uh, to get that taper pin to budge, um, which is kind of expected, I guess. Um, so unfortunately, I'm going to leave this on for the moment. Um, I've got some other things that I could try to remove. Um, there's a, oh, okay. Well, here's a part that comes off immediately. Um, this thing, so I can put that in, uh, I guess we're up to bag five. So I can do that. Five. Uh, this other piece is actually. It looks like that other piece is set screwed in. So, so that's going to stay. Um, there is this piece, um, which is. Let's see. Well, it's taper pinned in on this side. And on this side, I don't know how it's actually held on, um, but it could be worth trying to remove. Could be, but you know, considering that it's pinned in, I don't know. So I'll just leave that for now. Uh, okay, so there is uh, this axle, which may be removable. We see that on this side there is a screw that is accessible. So let us remove that screw. Huh. Okay. Can we uh, hold on to the axle while we unscrew it? Because that would be kind of... Uh, Oh, uh, just one thing that we should note on this side there is a thin washer. So, thin washer. Right. Okay, so. And again, we uh, will try to remove this. Let's see. I think I can probably hold on to it on one side. And try to unscrew it on the other. It's not being very cooperative. Let's try uh, over here. being cooperative at all. There we go. Just required the correct screwdriver, I suppose. Okay. So we have a washer. And it looks to be the same size washer as the one we put in bag five before. So I'll put it in bag five, and then we've got a rather large screw, which is an 832. It's 832, and the threads look to be about uh, three-eighths of an inch long. So that can go in bag five. Now let's see if the gear comes out. Oh, 
is there a taper pin in there? There's a taper pin in there. I really hate these taper pins, but the gear does come off. Um, so there is a, a little pin on the side of the gear. There's a hole right where it goes. Oops. So the gear will go in there. Anything else comes off? Is that it? Yep. So I think uh, there appears to be a taper pin in there. Um, there's also there's also this spring which I will attempt to remove. I don't know why it's there. But in any case, I'm going to attempt to remove it. Uh, let me see. I have a little dental pick here. So I'm going to just pry it off of the one end. Because otherwise I can't see the taper pin. Try to hook the end. And then pull on it. Maybe the other end would be easier. Yeah, the other end is definitely easier. All right, so I can remove that. It's really hanging on. Do I have here? I have some pliers that will probably help. There we go. Okay. So that's a big fat spring. It's very strong. So that'll go in the bag as well. can see I can see that there is a taper pin but I don't really see which side is the bigger one so um, again this is probably going to have to wait unfortunately that is very unfortunate so Yeah, highly unfortunate. I don't really want to take this side off because uh, if I do, then basically these axles will just be hanging off it and then it'll be a lot more difficult to remove the taper pins uh, if, I'm, if I'm ever going to be able to remove the taper pins. So I'm going to leave that side on for now. Um, I think we'll probably, let's see. What else should we do? I think I think the top keyboard mechanism can come out. So we've got um, so I believe it's probably just held in place with these rails on front and back, which means that I should be able to remove these two uh, long standoff looking screws. So I can do that, and I can do that. They're the same, so they can go into bag five. And now I hope I can just lift off the keyboard mechanism completely. All right, so that's going to be uh, also interesting to model. Um, these keys are very different from the, uh, from the uh, K. Um, so, ah, yeah, and you can see the reason here. The reason is that, that these rockers um, don't have those little um, extensions that 
are um, variously tilted. So that means that the various tilts have to be encoded in the bottom of the keys, um, which, uh, so, so obviously that was, I think, a major innovation in going from this model F slash G um, to the model K. Um, so that was, that was quite major, I think. Um, it made building these machines a lot easier um, than making all sorts of different uh, key tops. So we can set that aside. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's not much left to the frame. Um, we've got these rockers, which, uh, which we really shouldn't remove until we can actually remove this guy. Um, so that's basically how the, how the rockers work. They move these uh, variable um, toothed wheels over like that. So the number of, so the amount that you uh, move these gears in is the number of teeth that you get. So this one has uh, five teeth on it, and this one has different sizes, uh, one, two, three, and four. So you can move this different amounts. Um, and depending on how far you press these in, you get, you know, anywhere from zero to nine teeth engaged. Those, those teeth can just rotate these freely rotating gears, which then rotate um, the carriage, the digits on the carriage. Um, and this thing is the carry mechanism right here. So it's phased so that it rotates um, after these teeth are registered. So I think we're going to break now since we've gotten a lot of major pieces out. Um, maybe I think the next step is, yeah, we're going to model uh, some of these pieces in SolidWorks. So that'll make a break from actually trying to take parts off this physical thing. We can start working in the software, see how it works. Um, it's not going to be... Uh, it's not going to be a big like introduction to SolidWorks. I'm kind of assuming that you know how to draw a sketch in SolidWorks. Um, it's fairly easy to use, I think. Uh, there's a lot of tutorials on the web, so you know, get going with that if you don't already know how to use SolidWorks. Um, in terms of getting SolidWorks, um, you can. I'll just say that you can get SolidWorks uh, and leave it at that. Um, and, you know, I'm sure that there's like SolidWorks trials that you can get as well. Um, so that's always handy. Um, if, you, if you have access to a makerspace, um, they sometimes have SolidWorks licenses. Um, so you can go in there and just work on their computers with SolidWorks. Um, but in any case, you know, I'm just going to I'm just going to take SolidWorks, make the models, uh, and then export them to various formats. Uh, so and then put them on Thingiverse, and then you can look at them yourself. Um, so you don't actually have to have SolidWorks. It's just it's just kind of convenient to have. So anyway, um, that's that for now. That's it for episode two. Um, for episode three, we're going to take a look at SolidWorks. So see ya.